Hey y'all! Hey guys! <laughs> Welcome back to another Winging It Wednesday. This week we thought we'd talk about some of the things we consider when we're picking a campsite or a site at an RV park. So stick around! <laughs> Okay, first of all, if you're new to our channel, welcome. We're glad you're here. And for those of you who are back, thanks for joining us again. Here on Winging It Wednesdays, what we do is we set up the timer on my phone for 10 minutes. We talk about the topic. When the timer goes off, discussion's over. Pretty simple. We may get off course though, but... We're winging it. We're winging it. So we're setting the timer, 10 minutes on the clock. We're winging it. Winging it. <laughs> All right, so picking a campsite. Now, for us, it, partially it depends on, say, uh, if we're going to an RV park or a campground, like a state park or a forest service park or some more natural area. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, well, first and foremost, level is, I think, the first thing we really look at. I mean, you want a le as level of a site as you can get. And believe me, we've had some that are weren't level at all. I mean, we had one in Huntsville that I think it was at a 45 degree angle. I mean, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. We put down the leveling jacks and it started going. Ooh. Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was crazy. But yeah, I, I think, you know, regardless of where you're camping, even if you're boondocking or whatever, you, you want to get as level of a site as you can. And even when we've done boondocking, going out in parking lots and stuff for baseball games and stuff, it was, sometimes it was a challenge to find the most level spot. You remember in yeah. Huntsville at Sam Houston State, they said, I went to school there, and and uh, so we called them, and Austin was playing in a tournament there, so we called them ahead of time and said, can we stay in the parking lot? And we got approval to do it. And we get there, and the parking lot, they're letting us, I mean, it was the hilliest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and we grabbed a spot way off to the edge, which that was a better spot anyway. We were out of the way. Mm -hmm. And we got it pretty level. And it, I mean, it worked out, but it still was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, I think another thing we look at is um, the surrounding area. Um, and by that, I mean, that can mean a lot of different things. But, you know, like if we're going during the summer and it's warmer, maybe we want more shade. Um, so we'll look for something that's a little bit more shaded. Uh, if it's during the winter and it's cooler, maybe we don't want the shade. Maybe we want to have more sun. Uh, so... You know, we'll take that into consideration. Yeah, in the cooler months, or if we're up north or wherever, we don't have to worry about is it 30 or 50 amp because, or even if you're boondocking, if it's cooler, it's a lot easier. We don't have to run the generator as much. But if if it's only a 30 amp site, it's fine. If it's if it's below 75, 80 degrees. It's not a problem. 75, probably, yeah. I think 80, we can make it with 30. She seems to think it. But I think we can. But, yes, um, we have to have 50 amp, though, when it starts to get to those warmer temperatures. Yeah, because we definitely need to run both air conditioners when it's warmer. Yeah. And so that's something that, so we end up with a larger variety of sites available during the cooler months. Uh, because we can stay, and a lot of times we do choose to stay in a, a 30 hemp hookup site, uh, depending on the location where it is or if there's a park we want to go to. There are some parks that we'll only go to in the cooler months because they don't offer 50 amp hookups. Well, and, and, our, I, our, and I also think the reason why Stacy's saying 75 degrees versus 80 is because we have star. Yep. You know, and that's the main consideration. We could do it in a 30 amp hookup without star, probably up to 90 degrees. But because a lot of times we like to, <laughs> we like to have the windows open and have cross breezes and stuff. But we're not going to do that if we have to leave star in the RV. Right. We have to make sure that it's going to be cool enough for her. 
Right. And that's that's one reason why, you know, for sure we want 50 amp when it gets warmer. So another thing we look at is uh, location within the campground or the RV park. Um, if there are certain amenities that we want to be closer to or maybe further away from. A lot of times we don't use the, um, the bathhouses because um, we have our own bathroom, our own shower and everything. And, and typically we'll use that. And so we don't need to be really close to uh, a bathhouse. But a lot of folks like to use those, uh, the bathhouses offered by the parks. And so they'll try to get closer. So depending on what your needs are. Yeah, I, another thing I think in a state park, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, where most of the sites might be semi, they're all pretty level and blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe they're all 50 amp or 30 amp, whatever they are. Then I like to look for the ones that have a little more privacy. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's, you know, stuff built up around it. Or maybe you're on an end site um, and no one's behind you. Because a lot of times in some of these campgrounds, there's a site actually right behind you. Mm hmm or could be right next to you. And and so I look for that, I mean. That's a good point. Um, you know, one thing we use um, to find or to pick out some of the sites, depending on, it works really well um, when you're in a campground that has more public access uh, compared to a private road type of thing. But you can look on Google Earth and sometimes look at individual campsites and RV spaces to get a feel for kind of really what it looks like. Sometimes the picnic table will be on the opposite side of what you'd expect, for example, next to your hookups. Sometimes the hookups are on the opposite side. That's true. Sometimes it's a back-end side or a pull-through or a pull-in. Um, and for us, we really don't care uh, whether it's back-end or pull-through or... No. Now, if, we're, if it's something that borders, say, a lake that's got, really got a beautiful view and we have the option of pulling directly in so that we can look out our front windshield and see that, hey, we're all for that. Absolutely. In fact, we may park backwards for that. Yeah. Um, and we got taught that by another RVer. Yeah, some folks we met at Brazos Bend one time. Uh, they were parked backwards in their site, and we stopped and we said, well, you know, why did you choose to, to pull in backwards? And, and they were running their, their power and everything underneath their rig. And they said, well, because we don't, we don't want to look at the road. We'd prefer to look at the wildlife and the, and the forested area behind us. And so that made perfect sense. Yep, it did. Um, so what are some other things? Well, you know, one thing is if we're going to an area where we're, we're going to be staying in an RV park and we have multiple parks to choose from, a lot of times we'll, we'll make a decision based on the location of the park compared to the things we want to see in that town. Yep. You know, so if they're comparable, if they look like similar parks, if they're about the same price range, we'll look and we'll say, well, what do we want to do while we're visiting that area? And we'll try to find the one that's the most convenient to the things we want to do. Well, and then inside an RV resort or RV park, if you if there are certain amenities you want to use, you right. may want to site close to that. You may want to be close to the pool. but and. I don't mind being close to the pool, but I don't want to be right next to the pool because right. on the weekends and stuff, it can get really loud sometimes. So there's there's a there's a give and take. I do like being close to the pool, but just not right next to it. Well, and we've been at some RV parks and campgrounds too, where some of the amenities literally are right back up against. So we've seen like horseshoe pits set up right back against oh, yeah. somebody's RV. Or a basketball goal. Yeah. set up right in the site almost so a lot of times we'll ask that question you know when we're looking at the map we'll say okay where is this site compared to that basketball goal or how close is it really you know because yeah i'm not sure i want to be right next to something where folks are throwing horseshoes or or basketball but it was nice at the one we stayed at uh, in houston one of them that had the uh, barbecue grill real close that was nice. Uh, and it, we weren't right next to it again, so we would hear everybody come to it, but we were one off of it, so we could use the grill almost every night. That's true. So that was really nice. We didn't have to use our own grill. We just used theirs, and they cleaned it every single day, so it was nice. Yeah. Um, some other things we look at is 
we don't necessarily want we like to be near um, the heads of tri hiking trails and things like that trailheads but I don't necessarily want to be right next to it because a lot of times folks aren't thinking they're excited they want to get on the trail and so they'll cut through the sites that are closest to that trailhead and so you know a few spaces off for for me is typically a little more preferred so that it's easy access when we're ready to go hiking it's right there and that's awesome um, but we don't have to worry about folks cutting taking the shortcut and cutting right through the site except the cap rock i mean cap rock the last time we were there the site was right next to the to the walkway or the um yeah, the trailhead uh, trailhead and yeah there was a lot of a lot of loud guys one day but the view was stunning Amazing. so we put oh 10 minutes that went fast that went fast so i'd love to know what some of the things you use to pick your sites um, we're always looking for new information and I know a lot of folks who are watching our videos are are looking to share information as well So please leave us a comment and tell us, you know, some of the things that you look at when you're picking a campsite. Yeah And as always, thanks for joining us. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and join the adventure We post videos here on YouTube every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central and every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central yeah, and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. That helps us a ton. Yes, it does. And of course, we always look forward to hearing from y'all. So leave us a comment. Yeah. And until next time, y'all, keep on winging it. <laughs> Safe travels. And happy camping. Bye. Bye.